it's when we get stuck in a rut that we're, you know, it, and I'm most fr frustrated or it can seem like it never ends. And it's good news for us to know that our brains are able to change and we can change and um, redirect the energy flow and uh, form new neurons and, and sever the ones that are not serving us. And so um, it's important for us to understand where they all start. I think the source or um, the root of the problem, the root of where these all may, might have come from. And doing that work, I think, is really important because it leads us to a better outcome, a better us, right, a better version of ourselves. And I really appreciate how you were sharing the example of the tantrum because it's like with the tantrum, right, for a child that we also have experiences as adults, right? We've got things that work. A co-worker might not be understanding us or we might get frustrated because we don't seem to get our message across. And so it can really elevate our emotions. And if we're not in this state of awareness to pick up on what it is that we lost in translation or where is the point of disconnect, then we can get caught up in a whirlwind of he said, she said, or she's intending this, she's intending that. These made up stories that our brains will fabricate that lead us to a less than desirable outcome. They lead us to, you know, uh, disgruntled workers or um, they lead us to friendships that break apart. And, and we we don't want to do that, right? We, we don't want to have... Uh, I suppose, fragmented relationships or, or, or fragmented ways of being. Like, you know, when you show up at work, for example, and because you had a disagreement with a co-worker, then there's the silent treatment. Well, that, that's a fragmented relationship. That's a fragmented way of working because now there's going to be this impeding um, issue that doesn't allow us to communicate properly. We're going to communicate in a very defensive or maybe very cold way. I don't really want to talk to you, but I have to talk to you, so I'm just going to give you the facts and not going to give you much explanation, which then hinders our ability to be productive or perhaps to even serve uh, the cause in which we're working, right? Um, and so uh, it, it just brought that up for me when I'm thinking about the tantrum and I'm like, wow, we have tantrums that happen in our life and it's not so much that these can be prevented because we do not control people on the outside, right? We don't control others' emotions and what they're coming with and their baggage and their inability to do the self-work. But we do control ourselves. We can have a say in how we respond. And, and I was talking to someone on the weekend and saying, like, I really want to leave you with this. You can't control what others are going to do because she was talking about how there was just certain things being done that were undermining her position. Um, and I said, well, while you can't control other people, work on, you know, controlling the state in which you respond, Work on paying attention to how you can show up in that situation, regardless of what might happen or might be said about you. Because once you can work that out, then it doesn't matter what happens on the outside. You're going to maintain a more stable way of being. And being means like my state of being right now and how as I'm transcending, I'm still in peace. I'm still in gratitude. I'm still in serenity. I'm still in in awe of what life is offering me. And so I'm going to then allow and be open to the possibilities that even a bad situation can be turned into something great, right? And so I think I think it, it it's it's this, yeah, it's a really important dynamic to pick up on. And and what I've realized is as I'm as I'm doing that work and as I'm engaging with people and getting, you know, more attentive and being more aware of what is transcending between us before the whirlwind starts, right? Because I don't want to be caught up in the chaos. I don't want to be caught up in the tantrum. So I'm paying more attention to, okay, if something is beginning to feel like it's being elevated or people are beginning to be irritated and disconnected, what is what is happening right now? What is in this moment that is transcending that I need to pay attention to? And so I sometimes might pick up on, oh, there's a misunderstanding. Oh, okay, let's go back to basics. Let's Let's go back to the message and then put the message in a different frame. Or there might be the issue of, I'm not seeing your side of things because I haven't had that experience. Okay, let me paint the experience so that you have more context, right? And so I find that as I'm being attentive to that, I'm resolving situations and really avoiding the chaos that can result. And often that might have had 
resulted because the ego got in the way. You know, like if my ego gets in the way, I'm like, oh, I've got to be right. I've got to be right. But actually, nobody's out to get anybody. People are just trying to do the best they can. There's just a lack of awareness as to how maybe we show up. And for myself, this has been a challenge because I often will say things to people like, you know, I'll be direct. If someone's asking me a question, I'll answer it directly and I'll say, no, you can't do that. Um, and not everyone's ready for a direct answer. People are still working out their stuff and those who are not intentional with how they work their stuff out may find it a little bit confronting and a bit too much. And so if I was showing up to someone and said, you know, I think that you should do this and that work and, and this is what you're lacking, you know, this is your deficit, they might not take it very well. But if I got alongside that person and realized where their struggles are and what they're ready to hear, they might be more receptive to that. Um, and so I find myself uh, really being more intentional to assess the situation. Like, is this person one that is capable right now to hear a blunt truth or do we need to go the, you know, the, the, the scenery way where you just sort of use lovely, um, perhaps, um, what do they call them? Is the synonyms or you use stories like Jesus used to write parables, right? He would say in, in parables rather than saying this is what you're doing wrong and this is what's happening. And so just, yeah, I think for me it, it's been that challenge of, okay, students are not ready to hear the truth as you would just put it. And sometimes, you know, mature people and certain, certainly people within certain positions, I think we we need to challenge each other to be at that mature level to accept the, the truth as the truth is because in some situations you don't have time to give every you know and and to go back and forth and do this what we might call circling um but in some situations you just need to be straightforward so people get the message and there's no confusion about it and one of the ways that i found um or one of the instances where i found this to be true is you know when a page when a student story is failing if a student's failing i don't want to go around the, the roundabout way and say oh you know, you just did great. It was wonderful. But, you know, it's just a few things didn't work out, you know, because by the end of our conversation, the, the student is confused. And so there's a there's there's a fine line as to how often you go into take the scenery route and explain things and work things out in circle and all of that. And then there's there's some situations where that just isn't the case. You you don't need to do that. You need to recognize that the person perhaps is within a leadership position where certain maturity is, is required and should come as a standard with that person um, that they will be able to handle uh, what's being said. And oftentimes, you know, if we really pay attention, things are not said about us. There's really said about processes and things that might be happening that we can influence, that we can change, but they're not talking about me personally as, as Juana, right? They're not saying you have a terrible thought process or, you know, they're not attacking the very being of who I am. They're just saying in terms of the work or things that you're producing might not be adequate for what's needed. And so, yeah, I just, I, I kind of took it in a different direction, but I really felt, yeah, with that whole, picture you gave about the chaos it's like there's so much there that we can prevent in this situations all around us that can cause that tantrum that chaos 